Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Hello, all you football fans, and welcome to the GSMC Football Podcast. I am your host, as always, Jeff Malinoff, and with me is my partner in crime, Mark Souza. Yet again, we have stuff to talk about. We got Thursday Night Football between the Chargers and Chiefs, the battle for the AFC West, as well as the Raiders and them moving out of Oakland. Maybe the final game will be on Christmas Eve, who knows, as well as I have made my bowl picks, and I'm going to tell my bull picks to my friend here, Mark, and we're gonna react to my bull picks. And how much how time smart did you spend on them? Um, I well, you know the uh, the preview button for each one. Sure. I looked at their stats and went off through that. So, so I you went s- to each one though, huh? Yeah, oh, I, I, I I would say about thirty seconds each, just okay. based off the stats. And then, like obviously, the bigger teams you already knew. You already yeah, knew yeah, yeah. I, I would say uh, thirty seconds for stuff I was unsure about mm-hmm. and then there was ones i just Get based off record stuff it's yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. what i do with march madness like when you fill out your bracket and you're yeah, like because there's oh, like I really what do you don't know what, if i should pick uh um, what do you know about troy university you know what i mean yeah, yeah. yeah when you do march madness it's like oh i really don't know who i should pick between cal state bakersfield versus unc mm-hmm. wilmington well, I also went for like the underdogs with the least amount of stats because you're never gonna, they're never going to actually be 100% right when it comes to that type of stuff. Sure. So, yeah. Anyways, cool. let's talk about Thursday uh, night football tonight. Chargers. There's football tonight? Yes. And did you hear what Stephen A. Smith said about this, pre- this matchup? Stephen A. Smith thinks that Hunter Henry is going to be a major factor tonight for the Chargers. And he's been playing well this whole year. And he's been playing for San Diego. There's two things with that. One, they're not in San Diego, which is an understandable mishap. That's, that's an easy one, yeah. And an easy one to, to Hunter Henry on. hasn't played all year. He tore his ACL in May. Yeah. So he hasn't been, he hasn't liked the way Hunter Henry's been playing because he hasn't seen him play this season. Mm hmm. Yeah. So there's a couple things with that. Stephen A. Smith. Uh, How did no one stop him? Oh, today. and he also said Spencer Ware was going to have a good game. And he's also yeah, been Max out. Yeah, Max had to. Had to correct him and let him know that he wasn't playing. And he said, "Oh yeah, that's right, that's right." Poor Teddy Bruschi. Teddy Bruschi's face told the story. If you haven't seen the clip, go to Twitter. Teddy Bruschi, his face says everything you need to know about Stephen A. Smith's analysis of tonight's Thursday night football game between yeah. the Los Angeles Chargers and the. Kansas that's why I just say the Chargers, just not to make, get confused and mess up. But I'm going to say that when uh, you say. When uh, Teddy Bruce, my uh, also my fellow alum of University of Arizona, his face said it all, and like you were saying, his reaction was great. I'm surprised he didn't just go off on Stephen A. But uh, how we see this game playing out, it's going to be a close game for sure. This is going to be a very competitive matchup. They haven't played each other since week one, but a lot has happened since week one. Both these teams have gotten better since week one. But I would do say the Chiefs are a little handicapped without Kareem Hunt. Would you say so? Yeah, both teams are injured, too, coming mm-hmm. in. But, yes, yes, the Chiefs, I mean, obviously we don't need to talk about it forever, but the Chiefs are you know, losing Kareem Hunt, whatever. It doesn't matter what your thoughts are. That's a huge loss for their actual football team, and they're not the same team without him. They definitely lose that dynamic ability on offense. Spencer Ware is a decent player, but he's definitely not Kareem Hunt. And even Spencer Ware looks like he's out tonight. So Damian Williams, I think, will get the start for Kansas City. On the other side, the Chargers, they'll be without Melvin Gordon, most likely. He's questionable. He could play. I know he's been trying to play, and they've held him out for this game. But it's only been two weeks that he suffered an MCL injury. I would be I would be shocked if they rushed him out there if he wasn't fully ready to go, to be honest with you. Yeah, but I think uh, it's one of these things where, like, this game has so much riding on it. 
But is this game so important that you're willing to risk the rest of his season for it? Um, like, let me ask you this. Would you rather win this game and lose Gordon for the rest of the season or lose this game and get Gordon for the rest of the season? Uh, I would say hold off until he's 100% ready for the post. Because I, I want him in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, I want him in the playoffs. Even if we have to go on the road and win you know, on the road in those playoff games to get to the Super Bowl, I'd rather have my best running back, to be honest. True. But, again, this game has still has a lot of riding on it. Like, first-round buys at stake in some cases. And also the fact that winning the AFC West is way more important than just getting a wild card swap so because home field advantage. But we said this on the sports podcast that getting home field advantage for the Chargers isn't as important as the Chiefs getting home field advantage. Would you say – would you agree? Yeah, the Chargers don't really have a home field advantage. But – I see where you're, I see what you're saying, but it's always better to play in the comfort of your own home rather than on the road, even if that yeah. advantage isn't huge, right? Like, I mean, they they have. I'd rather to... play in LA than play at Foxborough if I'm the Chargers, right? Yeah, absolutely. But again, they're gonna have the same amount of uh, f- uh, enemy fan base, sure. Wherever they are, mm-hmm. that's the, kind of the unfortunate thing. They get to sleep in their own areas and stuff like that. I get that. They that's the advantage, but overall, you get to play in better weather. You yeah, get, you get to. I mean, yeah, but. You're still going to have more fans at home than you are if you go to Fox. And there's not Pittsburgh. many, unfortunately, for them, though. Yeah, it's probably the worst home field advantage in the NFL. But that's Chargers saying something to too. Win. That's saying something big, though, too. Yeah, it's just LA. You know, there's a lot of fans. Even the, even the Rams. Look at the Rams games. There's yeah. a lot of fans from the other teams there. And they're... when they play, when the Rams play the Packers. That place was half Packers for sure, yeah. at least. And like, let's face it, the Chargers are the redheaded stepchild of the Los Angeles fan base of the NFL. Oh, of Los Angeles fan base, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you can see, the Clippers are getting up there and are going good as well, but they're still going to get that uh, that look of like, oh, you're not as important as so and so. Yeah, we'll see how it works out though. L.A. likes winners, and if the Chargers end up being a more winning franchise in their time in L.A., I think maybe the pendulum will swing in their way rather than the Rams. But at this time, it's clear that the Rams are number one in their city. Tyreek Hill, he comes into tonight banged up. There was questions if he would play. It looks like he will play. He's practiced. But, man, when he first started practicing at the beginning of this week, he looked poor. He looked very hobbled by that foot injury. It looked a little bit better yesterday. It looks like he will give it a go. But the Chiefs, you talked about how banged up they are. Spencer Ware is out. Tyree Kill might be out. Sammy Watkins is missing another game. Eric Berry is questionable. They're a banged up team right now. They really are. And they are at home. So I give them that helps that they're at home tonight. But do you worry about them in the playoffs with this banged up roster? Yeah, I mean, since the Kareem Hunt incident, I moved them from number one on my power rankings to, I believe, number five, and I don't think they're better than that right now. Yeah, it's a real shame, too, because this team, like, you know what we said about the beginning of the season that I said uh, Andy Reid has this bad luck charm? I didn't expect it to go like this. Yeah. I expected, like, just them not to play well, not have everyone hurt or be cut or, you know, not be 100%, but... That's just that's just the luck with Andy Reid, unfortunately. I feel bad for him almost. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to... I'm not going to go that far. Like, I mean, he's had his struggles in the playoffs. He's also been very close to winning a Super Bowl. But stuff like this, you can't really predict. Like, yeah, they it's, didn't know. it's not fair. But um, honestly, I can see the Chargers winning this. I can see... But I, it's still a home field advantage for the Chiefs, so I got to give it to them. In this one. Yeah, you like the Chiefs to win? Yeah, I'll like, give them a 31-24 victory. 31-24 Chiefs. Okay. Um, this game is tough. It's a short week. Chiefs are at home. That makes a difference, both of those things. I think the injuries slightly favor the Chargers here as they'll retain most of their best players where the Chiefs will have a couple guys out that are difference makers, I think. This game mm-hmm. will be good. This game will be good. I, I believe it. I think Phillip Rivers will have a huge game, though, because he torched them for 424 yards passing in their first meeting this year. 
Mahomes actually didn't have that great of a game when they played each other in week one. Now, I know it was week one, so a lot has changed since then. That was Mahomes' first uh, opening day start as a starting quarterback in the NFL. So you can imagine that maybe there's some nerves there and inexperience. But the way Mahomes has been playing, you could argue that he's the MVP of the NFL at this time. I probably would. Yeah, oh, absolutely. 40, 40, over 40 touchdowns speaks for itself. But Rivers is hot right now, and he's been playing great all year. He's also a guy that would be in the MVP conversation in probably a different He year. is in the MVP conversation still, in my opinion. Yeah, he's probably like a he's a can He's a candidate, I would say, but not going to mm-hmm. win it. Yeah, he's probably maybe in the top five. I'm not sure. But hasn't that been like his career? Like He's always like, oh, he could be MVP if it wasn't this season. Someone else had a great season. You know what I mean? I feel like that's been his career forever. Mm-hmm. He, every time he has a great year, it's because of the fact that he's just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, absolutely. So I like the Chargers to win this game. Don't forget, man, they just went to Pittsburgh and came back and won that game against the Steelers team. That looked like they were going to win that game, but that second half I think really sparked – the Chargers, I think that has really led them with the second wind that we're seeing from them as they make this playoff push. It's a big game tonight. I think the Chargers get it done, 31-27. to 27. I know that they're on the road, but, man, their defense is just better than the Chiefs' defense. And I think the Chargers' defense can do enough to limit Patrick Mahomes. And mm-hmm. Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey has been their guy that's been the focal point of that offense. He shows up every single week. He's one of the most consistent players in the NFL. But don't forget, the Chargers spent their first-round pick on rookie Derwin James, safety from Florida State. The kid is good. He's physical. And I think the Chargers have the ingredients to at least limit Kelsey. I don't think they'll stop him. I don't know if he's a stoppable player, Mm quote-unquote. The Ravens did pretty good against Kelsey. I think they held him to seven catches for 70 yards and a touchdown, which you'll take that against a Travis Kelsey who seems like he's going over 100 every week. But, man, um, yeah, I like the the Chargers here because their defense is just better. Yeah, and that's basically worth this game. This That's what defense wins championships goes into play, especially in the end of the season right here. Whoever has the best defense usually gets to the Super Bowl, and that might be the Chargers the at the Chiefs moment. The Chiefs couldn't stop the Ravens last week, and they knew that the Ravens were going to run the ball pretty much every play, and that was a little bit surprising to me. I know the Chiefs' defense has gotten better since the beginning of the year. They could rush the passer a little bit, but I still think the Chargers are going to be able to run the ball tonight. I think they'll be able to score, um, but I do expect a a good game. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be competitive throughout the entire game. No question about it. There is a chance this game could not live up to the hype, though. You know, short week, guys off injuries, things like that. I could see it being a little sloppy at the beginning of the game. Yeah, it's it's yeah, but I think the well, ending when we is... we take a look at the playoff picture, like, it's a big game. I mean, the loser of this game could end up being the fifth place team in the AFC and having to play every game on the road in the playoffs and have no buy or the winner of tonight could possibly win the conference, win the division at least, and get a first round buy and play home games throughout the uh, postseason. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's one of these things in where this game has so much writing on it. The outcome all winds up to playoff positioning and that's what you love about the end the last primetime games of the of the of the season is mm-hmm. all the stuff that's riding on it is so important and so crucial yeah absolutely the nfl got fortunate here with having a thursday night game that is a lot bigger of a deal than like last week's remember last week's game was the uh the titans and the jaguars with Derek. <sighs> but it was Derek henry's breakout game but yeah that game had a lot less clout like a lot less excitement than uh than what we see tonight tonight's game will at least at the very least uh bring a lot of attention just because um just because of the playoff positioning that we're talking about i mean isn't it one thing isn't it crazy though that one of these teams could finish maybe 12 and 4 and be a wild wild card card. team Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i mean there's been so many times where a division has such a stacked roster like such a stacked uh, con- con- 
such a stacked division that when you look at it, like there's sometimes a 10 and 6 team or 11 and 5 team that doesn't even make the playoffs. And you look at the AFC North right now, and the Steelers are sitting at seven wins, and they're leading their division. So I think it would be nice if the Chargers won. It would be a nice gift for their fans who have – let's be honest. Charger fans have been through a lot over Philip Rivers' career. They've always been a good team, but they've never been the best team. Mm-hmm. So it would be he's, always, re- he's always been like the like even when he made it to the AFC title game with the Chargers, he faced the seventeen and zero Patriots at the time. Like yeah. he's always had that bad luck, and where like he's so good, but yet someone else is that much better. So during these holidays, I mean, it would be a gift for Chargers fans to get a win tonight at Kansas City. Also, speaking of gifts, a perfect gift this holiday season is Harry's. What is Harry's? Well. Harry's is the shaving company that you need to get with. Harry's makes long-lasting quality products at a super reasonable price. They make it nice and easy for you. They deliver you your blades every week. So get that with a limited edition set and a special offer for fans of the GSMC football podcast. Harry's will give you $5 off any shave set, including the limited edition holiday sets. When you go to harrys.com backslash GSMC football, plus you'll get free shipping. This offer is for new and returning customers. It's only available for the holidays. Each Harry's shave set comes with ergonomic weighted handle, uh, German engineered five blade cartridges that provide a close, comfortable shave, foaming shave gel for a rich lather, a travel cover to protect your blades, and it comes in a handsome holiday gift box. Maybe you don't want this as a gift for somebody else, but you want it for yourself. Well, redeem a Harry's trial offer to experience the quality of shade before committing. Get your holiday shopping done early. Free shipping on these products. So act now. Go to harrys.com backslash GSMC football to get $5 off a shave set while supplies last. Again, that's harrys.com backslash GSMC football. What happens to your decision-making when you drink? Well, after one drink, you feel confident. A few more, and calling your ex at 1 a.m. seems like a great idea. And you're pretty sure the secret to a great taco is four-day-old macaroni. The bottom line, drunk you doesn't make great decisions. So you're risking a DUI or worse if you count on him to get you home. Plan before you party. Get home safe. Brought to you by Washington. Welcome back, everyone, to the GSMC football podcast. We just finished up with the Thursday night football matchup. Now it is time for the college football picks that I made, and you're going to react to it. Okay, let's do it, man. Okay, well, the first bowl game is North Carolina A and T. Oh God! Versus Alcorn off Strong. Alcorn. Uh, I think it's just Alcorn. How many, we're not doing this for sixty. We're not doing sixty-five bowl games. Now we're doing them all. There's not 65. How many are there? There are, I, well, we're just going to go through no, it, no, okay? No. How many bowl games I are there? I don't know. I want to know. I want to know. We're just gonna, I'm just going to go from the list, okay? This is the Armed Forces Bowl, last, if I'm correct. How many bowl games are there? Okay. There's 41. Jeez, okay, let's do it. We gotta go, we'll go fast. We're not going to talk about each one. All I, right, go oh, Not each one, but we're just going to go fast. So I picked. So this is a uh, North Carolina A and T versus this isn't Alcorn. Be fast at all? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Let's just just, just do our best. We're here. not starting off strong here. Okay. Well, you kept you kept saying okay, like I want. Going... Okay, fine. I picked Alcorn or not even Alcorn. I picked uh, North Carolina A and T. Sure, that sounds good. Okay, we got Tulane versus Louisiana in the Cure Bowl. Oh man, a battle of two Louisiana teams. Yes, I sure Tulane. Yes. Well, actually, no. I picked uh, I picked Louisiana. Uh, and then also, we're gonna just keep going. We're just gonna keep going here. Uh, you, you, Utah State versus 
University of North Texas. I picked Utah State because they were ranked at one point. You're supposed to react to them. Great. Utah State. Yeah. A- okay, here's that. actually one that we can talk about. Arizona State versus Fresno. I picked Fresno. Sure. Yeah. That sounds good. Uh, Georgia Southern versus Eastern Michigan. I picked Georgia Southern. Let's talk about some bowl games that actually have some teams that ma- matter. All right, Appalachian State versus uh, Middle Tennessee. Teams that matter. Okay, fine. Um, BYU versus Western Michigan. Oh, God. Okay, fine. Was like Luke All right, how, how about this? Memphis versus Wake Forest. Both teams have made upsets this season. Sure, Memphis. Let's I picked Wake them. Forest, but okay. Memphis almost won the whatever conference they're in with the UCF. Uh, the conference the USA. Yeah. Uh, Houston versus Army. Uh, give me Houston. I got Army. Army's ten and two versus Houston eight and four. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will skip Buffalo versus Troy. Thank you. Uh, we have our first ranked matchup oh, as uh, Boston College versus number twenty five Boise State. Boise State. Yeah, I picked. Are them. they playing in the Potato Idaho? Uh, Bowl? let me let me check that. Actually, I'll check that for you. I want to know. They're if- playing in the first responders bowl. Yeah. Boise State. Okay. Uh, we'll just go through the Is rank. Is the field green or blue? It's green. Okay. Well, then they, maybe they'll I'm two. pretty sure at least. All right. Uh, we'll just, how about we just go over the ranked teams in bowl games? We'll do, do that. that, and then tell me what the bowls okay. are. Camping World Bowl. West Camping? Virginia. Camping World. Who doesn't love that? Uh, West Virginia versus Syracuse. West Virginia all day. Yes, same here. The Alamo Bowl. Washington State. Iowa State. I picked Washington State. Yeah, number 13 Washington versus number State. 24, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now here's one that's actually interesting. The Peach Bowl, Michigan versus Florida. Michigan, easy. I pick Florida to win this because sometimes you can't go with the obvious choice. And Michigan, Harbaugh, does, when bowl games happen, he's just not that lucky. Like Super Bowl games? No, that's too soon. Ha, 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 ha. All right, Missouri versus Oklahoma State in the Liberty Bowl. Missouri? Missouri versus Oklahoma State in the Liberty Bowl. Missouri's an eight-point favorite. Oklahoma State. I picked Oklahoma State also. I went for the upset. Uh, the Holiday Bowl. Utah versus Northwestern. Utah is a seven-point favorite, but I went with Northwestern. Mm, Northwestern, I think, maybe. Mm-hmm. The Gator Bowl. Texas A&M versus North Carolina State. North Texas Carolina A&M or North Carolina State? North Carolina State has the better record, but not A&M. ranked. I'm going to the I went with North Carolina State because they're nine and three to A and M's eight and four, but yet A and M is ranked nineteen. So you did the math. Mm-hmm. In the Outback Bowl, Mississippi State versus Iowa. Do they get blooming onions for the winners? I, I don't know. Have you ever had a blooming onion? It sounds like a food from Applebee's. It's, it, no, it's from Outback. It's the blooming onion. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's same it's same restaurant. Let's get real here. No, one's actually from Australia. Oh my god! Just let's. And one is the actually it's not, but whatever. It's, one, it's just one is the like restaurant that. that they're clearly talking about in the movie Waiting. Have you seen the movie Waiting with uh, Ryan Reynolds? Is it? Yes, I think so. I never and actually Dane saw Cook it. Is in it? I only know that movie because my brother has the DVD of it's it. It's for sure Applebee's that they're like mocking. Whatever. Uh, here's actually. Wait, a, did I pick a team? Mississippi State and Iowa. You said Mississippi State. I didn't say. Oh, I thought you said Mississippi State. <laughs> I just thought about Blooming Onions. But um, let's go uh, Iowa. Okay. All right, here one. Citrus Bowl, Kentucky, Penn State. Give me Kentucky. Yeah, I like Kentucky. Fiesta Bowl. It's not the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. It's, it's PlayStation. the PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah. It actually was the Vizio before then, too. Interesting. LSU, UCF. I got UCF. LSU in a route. In a route. By at least 17, at least. Well, they're only seven and a half playing favorites, so maybe you shouldn't be such a jerk about it. I don't care. Respect the, respect the undefeated team. I respect them. I just think LSU is a really good team. Okay. Rose Bowl, Washington, Ohio oh, State. Oh, God. Ohio State by 30. Yeah, I picked Ohio State as well. I can't believe that that's the Rose Bowl. I mean, it's not Ohio State's it's fault. It's Pac-12 versus Big Ten. It's the always Pac-12 been that way. Pac-12 was a joke, like an absolute joke of a conference. Well, they, Washington's ranked ninth in the nation. Washington State's ranked thirteenth in the nation. Yeah, they're only so. ranked that high because they play each other, and they're just going to be ranked. One of them has to be ranked in the in the top ten. I mean, just because they all why these mediocre teams play each other. That isn't yeah because no. they're a power five. That doesn't if mean if you they, win the power five conference, you're going to be in the you're going to be ranked high. Period. Texas versus Georgia in the Sugar Bowl. 
Do you, do, let's talk about the Pac-12 championship game for a minute. That was maybe the worst football game that I've ever seen. It was mainly defensive. Every, <laughs> yeah. Or just inept offense, whichever way you want to look at it. Well, I mean, the, both offenses were actually ranked pretty high in the, their perspective. Yeah, they could be ranked high, but they didn't play they well. They didn't play well, no, not at all. <laughs> uh, Texas, Georgia, in the Sugar Bowl. Well, when I think of Georgia, I think I'm just of gonna, sugar. So do I'm going to say Georgia. Why do you think of that? You know, because like peach, sugar, iced tea, that's a southern thing. And I know that Texas is in the south too, but it's not like the deep south, you know. Okay. Now let's go to the national championship games, the okay. playoffs. Notre Dame and Clemson. Clemson. I picked Notre Dame. I, I want Notre Dame to win. Okay, Alabama and Oklahoma. Alabama. Alabama. I see Alabama winning this game, I winning the national championship. Third, I wish they did a third place game. No, it's a waste of time. They wouldn't want to play that. I know, but it'd be fun. Alabama versus. Okay, so basically we pick out. Al, so Alabama or Oklahoma versus Notre Dame and Clemson. Who do you got winning? Oh, I have Clemson and Alabama moving on to the final, and then I have Alabama. Beating Clemson. I also have Alabama winning their the national Against championship game. Notre Dame. And if since I, there's always a tiebreaker, I have the tiebreaker as forty five to thirty eight, which sounds like a reasonable score. Yeah, I could get behind that. Yeah. So that is all of the. Uh, what is the best name? The best bowl name. Well, the, okay. Look, all right, I'll read all the names of the bowl games to you, not just the teams. Yeah, I don't care about. The we teams. got the Cure Bowl, the New Mexico Bowl, the Las Vegas Bowl. The Camellia Bowl, the New Orleans Bowl, the Boca Raton Bowl. Boca Raton. Come Boca on, Raton. man. It's Sorry. Boca Raton. Frisco Bowl, the Gasparilla Bowl, the Gasparilla. Bahamas Bowl. I really am jealous of Toledo and Florida International for playing in the Bahamas. Do they actually play there? It's the Bahamas Bowl. I'm assuming that's that where they play. Mean anything. They're not playing Bahamas. They, there's a Hawaii Bowls in Hawaii. The Arizona Bowls in the... Oh, it's at... Uh, Thomas Robinson Stadium in Nassau? Nassau? I think it's actually in the Bahamas. Yeah. So lucky Maybe them. it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's lucky for them. I mean... I'm so... Like, you could... They could... Bahamas could, like... They could have potentially sponsored a bowl and then have it played in a stadium in the U.S., though. I mean... Yeah. But how lucky are they? Like, oh, we only had 8-4 and nice. and 75. Yeah, we're playing the nicest place in the world, roughly. That it looks like area. a pretty cool stadium, too. Yeah. It's definitely like a multi-event stadium. Oh, it's though. mainly for soccer, track. probably, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you see it's, the track around it's, it's soccer. It's, yeah, it's for, like, Olympic-type stuff, too. It looks cool, though. I mean, mm -hmm. they get to go to Bahamas where everybody else is going to be freezing their butts off. Yeah. <laughs> Famous Idaho Potato Bowl. There you go. See, I like the ones that have like six names in the title. Well, you know? famous Idaho potato was just one. It's just one thing, though. But I, I know, know, I know what you mean. I know. Uh, well, I think these are all reading just the bowl with the bowls called, not brought to you by. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because there's like the Armed Forces Navy Academy for the Deaf Children Bowl presented by Vizio and Xbox 360 and the game Red Dead Redemption Two. That's the name, whole name. <laughs> no, but the Armed Forces Bowl, I like that name. The Dollar General Bowl, which sounds like, like a General. which sounds like a cheap version of a bowl game. I like going to Dollar General for. Um, Guess who's in the Hawaii Bowl? Hawaii. Yeah, they're always in the Hawaii Bowl. I feel bad for them. They should be able to go somewhere else. Anyways, but I mean, if you if you uh, decided to go to college <laughs> in Hawaii, you want to just stay in Hawaii all the time, right? I have found my favorite bowl game name so far: the Cheez It Bowl. Cheese it bowl? Yes, Cal and TCU are in the Cheese It Bowl. That's my favorite name so far. Mm-hmm. The Pinstripe Bowl. I like that one too because it's at Yankee Stadium. Music City Bowl. That one's cool too. Um The Belk Bowl. The Arizona Bowl. The Military Bowl. The Sun Bowl. The Red Bo There's a Red Box Bowl? <laughs> That's awesome. Red Box is still a thing? I shocked myself. The, I, why so can't, the, why, why so not just call it, why not just call it the Netflix Bowl? You said Boca Raton Bowl, but that is not what it's completely called. It is the Cherubundi Tart Cherry Boca Raton Bowl. That's what it's called. Well, I'm just reading it based off the bowl game. I haven't seen the full name. It just this is what Bleacher Report puts mm -hmm. it in as. And it's the Bad Boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl. I'm going with that one. Wow, that one's that's just that's everybody insane. has a. A bowl game. Yeah. Well, they all have sponsors to them. Mm-hmm. 
So let's talk about the college football playoffs because we heard in the news that uh, some decision makers, some influencers in college football have met. They're discussing expanding the college football playoff from four teams to eight teams. What are your initial thoughts when you heard about this possible expansion? I like it. I really do. Because I think four is too small, to be honest. I understand why they did it to test out what how it would be. And it turns out to be a pretty, uh, a pretty good uh, condition because I think people are really enjoying it, personally. Don't you mm-hmm. think so? Yeah, I think that expanding the playoffs is a good thing. I, I liked when they introduced the playoffs because before, if you remember... We didn't even have a playoff. We had a we had a uh, computers. We had computers decide who the top two teams were going to play in the championship, uh, and then you know we went to this new process of having a four team playoff. But with five power conferences, it makes sense to expand the playoff past five teams to eight. I like the idea of having the five conference champions plus three at large bids, so you can see teams like Notre Dame, Central Florida, Georgia, for example get those last three spots i think it's good i think it is a positive addition if they go through this obviously if they do make this change changes will not go into effect for a couple years as contractually they are still obligated to do this four team playoff for the next i believe three more seasons if i remember correctly but yeah so you like it with eight you think eight's a good number yeah i can even i'll even go up to 10 to be honest with you Mm mm-hmm but, yeah, eight, 8 sounds good, and then see how that goes, and then move up to 10. 10, I think, should be the max. Yeah, I would say no more than that. I mean, here's the thing. with No matter how many teams they adjust this to, there's always going to be an argument of somebody feeling like they deserve to be in, and they didn't. So if you go to eight teams, the ninth team will feel like they were robbed. If you do 16 teams, the 17th and 18th place teams will think, man, we got screwed by the system right so it doesn't matter what number they do there will always be somebody on the outside looking in and there will always be someone upset or some fans upset about their team not making it maybe over a lesser deserving team but i like it i like the idea i think it was definitely something that was going to happen for because of this year because we saw Notre Dame get into the college football playoff. We saw a couple of the conferences not being represented in the college football playoff, so it makes sense. Yeah, but just I honestly just like it that there's a playoff. Like I back when the BCS national championship game was just like one and two, I got that. But just like sometimes the number three team is better than number two team or number one team. It just sometimes that's how it works, and this proves like if you give other teams a chance, they could like March Madness, for example, can do it. Like they the number 16 team could go on to the, win the national championship. You know, I love that unpredictability. Yeah. And I think that's what the playoffs are all about, unpredictability. And I like that if we expand it up to 10 or so however they want to do it, I like the unpredictability that any team can be national champions if they are in that playoff. See what I'm getting at? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you look at the top eight right now in the rankings, if we looked at those rankings – and then use the eight-team playoff format. You'd have what were the teams? Alabama against uh, Central Florida, and then you'd have which I would honestly like to see. Clemson is two. Who is who is seven right now? Michigan, Michigan is seven. So Clemson, Michigan, and then we'd have Notre Dame. Who's a six? Ohio State. Yes, uh, seven is Michigan. Six Ohio State. Five is Georgia, and then Georgia, Oklahoma. Okay. That would be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I could definitely see that happen. Like that would be a fun four games right there. You think Central Florida would just get mashed by uh, Alabama, or do you think they'd give him a fight? Um, what do you mean fight? What do you think the score would be between those two teams on? The oh, I thought you meant like they would actually just brawl. I'm like, I'm sure there's no hate there, but I would say. Mm, I still have to give it to the better team, you know? I mean, I know UCF is all about, like, oh, we just, we want Bama chance and all that good stuff. But honestly, it would be a blowout. Yes. Yeah. I'm just saying that UCF is a good team, of mm-hmm. course, but competing with the Alabama is, like, 
it's like completing with an NFL team almost, you know, because a lot of those guys are NFL ready already. And UCF, not a lot of guys are NFL ready on that team. Yeah, absolutely. The UCF team, I think even if they have their starting quarterback before he was injured, would they, they wouldn't stand a chance. I just don't see it happening. Alabama's just that good. I mean, we're talking about five-star recruits on top of five-star recruits and blah, blah, blah. They have a Heisman candidate quarterback backed up by a Heisman candidate quarterback. So, I mean, let's be honest. Those are two Heisman caliber players on a team full of ex- exceptional football players guys that are going to be first round picks second round picks we know alabama they turn out like 10 draft picks every single year every year in the nfl so anyways what do you say we uh should we take yeah yeah we should take a break and you know the christmas season is coming up and we're all thinking about what to give to our significant others and our loved ones in our life if you're looking for a man to give something for a man in your life harry shave set might be one for you Harry's makes a long-lasting quality product at a super reasonable price and uses German-engineered blades for as low as $2 each. It's a practical gift he'll actually use and save him money on blade refills. As a special offer for fans of this show, we partner with Harry's Shave Set to give you $5 off any shave set, including our limited edition holiday sets, when you go to harrys.com backslash gsmcfootball. Plus, you'll get free shipping. This offer is for new and returning customers and is only available for the holidays. Each hairy shaving set comes with an ergonomic weighted handle with an option to engrave, German engineered five blade cartridges that provide a close, comfortable shave, a foaming shave gel for a rich lather, a travel cover to protect your blades, and all in a handsome holiday gift box. Or you're just selling something for yourself? Redeem a Harry's trial offer to experience the quality of shave before even committing. And I have used this uh, shave set myself. I like it. It's a nice, close, smooth shave. My skin feels all nice and smooth. I honestly like it a lot. It's a great product. And if you go to harrys.com backslash GSMC football, once again, you'll get $5 off a shave set while supplies last. That's harrys.com backslash GSMC football. What happens to your decision making when you drink? Well, after one drink, you feel confident. A few more. And calling your ex at 1 a.m. seems like a great idea. And you're pretty sure the secret to a great taco is four-day-old macaroni. The bottom line, drunk you doesn't make great decisions. So you're risking a DUI or worse if you count on him to get you home. Plan before you party. Get home safe. Brought to you by Washington Target. Welcome back to the GSMC football podcast. We talked about college football, the playoffs. Will they be expanded? They just might. Some funny bowl names. I always like looking at those. And, of course, we discussed in the first segment the Chargers and the Chiefs. Let's move on. I want to talk about rookie quarterback report cards, Jeff. So I hope you're paying attention because what we're going to be doing in the next few minutes is where we'll be discussing each of the rookie uh quarterbacks and we'll talk about how good they've been doing in your opinion and you will be grading them so okay we're going F. we're going to start with baker mayfield baker mayfield as you know took over the job for the browns i believe it was week three the browns since they've let go of hugh jackson They've been doing a lot better. I don't know if it's because Hugh was in the way of Baker or not, but Baker Mayfield has impressed some folks. The Browns have been more competitive this year. They've won some games, and they are technically not out of the playoffs yet. They have actually a chance to win their division. I want you to give me a letter grade for Baker Mayfield and tell me why you feel that way. Give me a B. I'll give him a B. Okay, and tell me why. Because he has won some games with the Browns, which is first for a Browns quarterback in a long time, as well as just, like, 
yes, he's had, but he's also had these games where just like, what are you thinking type boneheaded plays. And that's understandable for a rookie. I'm not saying he's been the best. I'm not saying he's going to win rookie of the year, but I will say he's benefited his team to win. That's why I'm giving him a B. But he has had some games where he's thrown some costly interceptions, which I'm not. That's why I'm not giving him an A. Mm hmm. I'm giving him an A minus. Oh, okay. I feel that he has shown that he is the best quarterback from his draft, at least up, to, up until this point. He has shown me the ability to make all types of throws. And more importantly, I feel like his energy and his playmaking ability is infectious. I think when I watch the Browns play, I see a quarterback that makes the players around him better. And I see a quarterback who isn't afraid to make some tough throws. Does he make mistakes? He absolutely does. He makes some dumb throws sometimes, as a, you'd expect a rookie quarterback to. But at the end of the day, if I'm a Browns fan, I'm feeling very excited about our future, and I think it starts with Baker Mayfield. We do have other pieces, but it's Baker Mayfield that really gets you excited about the Browns' future. And for that, I give him an A-. minus. Let's move on, Jeff. Okay, sure. What's the next quarterback? The New York Jets took Sam Darnold in their fir in the first round. How do you think he has performed? And give me your letter grade for Sam Darnold. Well, he came out of the draft as, quote-unquote, the most NFL-ready quarterback of the draft. And people thought he might even go first overall. Mm -hmm. And so he goes third, which makes sense. And he had a pretty good starting opening debut game. Not not counting the pick six. But I'm going to give him a C plus. I'm giving him a C plus because the team around him is still struggling a lot. And usually as a quarterback, you got to make your other, the players you're around better, but he has not had the opportunity to do that. And he's also thrown some very questionable throws more than once, more than one game. And he's had more bad games than good, but I still think he still has the potential to be something great. So that's why I'm giving him a C plus. Sam Darnold, I'm giving a C minus to. Um, he has potential, although I will say there's some bias here because I didn't like him particularly that much coming into the draft. I thought his throwing motion was a little slow. And in the NFL, that's usually not good. That usually does not translate to wins at the next level. His best game was clearly his first game. Since then, he's had a rough go at it. He had an impressive win against the Colts in week six. But other than that, we're talking about a guy that's sitting at 55% completion percentage, 12 touchdowns to 15 interceptions. These are terrible numbers. He has 2,100 yards in 10 games. That's not terrible. It's not great either. I'm just not sure. I feel like he's a quarterback that has been getting worse as the season has gone on, and that concerns me. So for that, he gets a C- minus from me. All right. So let's move on. Uh, let's see. The Arizona Cardinals, they selected quarterback Josh Rosen from UCLA in the first round of the draft. What is your take on Rosen? And give me your letter grade for him. He's arguably on the worst team in the NFL right now. And he can only do so much. But he's thrown some very costly interceptions and he's not doing himself any favors so i'm gonna give him a d just a solid d but i'm not gonna say he's done like this is just a bust i'm gonna give him more of a chance to develop because he's a young guy and he's on a bad team so i'm saying he there was some bad interceptions yes does he not play good every single week yes but the fact of the matter is he still is young and still has all the potential in the world, so I'm not counting him out just yet. I'm giving Rosen a D plus, and I'm doing that because I think he's been terrible, but I am give me, giving him a little benefit of the doubt here. His numbers are pretty close to Darnold. In fact, they're almost the same. I give Darnold a C minus. I give Rosen a D plus. Rosen's at 55% passing, 1,900 yards, so he has less passing yards his completion percentage is the same the touchdown interception he has 10 tds 12 picks 
Again, that's not good. Um, I am giving the benefit of the doubt. I do think that he will be a better long-term player than Sam Darnold, if I'm being completely honest, but I'm not sure if either one will end up being great. All right, so let's move on to the Buffalo Bills. They selected in the first round of this draft quarterback from Wyoming. Some people were have been very mixed on him, but Josh Allen. Josh Allen is the quarterback that they selected. What is your take on him? Give me a letter grade for him. You might be shocked by this, but I'm going to give him a B. Wow, I am shocked. Because he has shown a lot of potential to me. He's had some very positive games. He's he's been he rushed over 100 yards last week, and this just shows that he might be said to be the face of the Buffalo Bills for the years to come. I know they're not playing well right now, and he has had some lull of a games. But the games he's been playing extremely well in have impressed me a lot. And that's why I'm giving him the B because he can only do so much with this team that's injured riddled and just not good in general. And he's still playing at a high level. And he's still playing and he's still making other guys look great. I mean, he could have won the game last week against Miami if it wasn't for Clay missing that pass. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree with that, but I pretty much disagree with everything else that you said. Okay. Granted. Well, that's your opinion. So go for it. 52% passing, that's absolutely atrocious. 1,400 yards passing, five touchdowns, nine interceptions. Okay, gr- okay he also hasn't played all the games. you got to add that to the mix. Well, he's played, he's played nine games. He's played one less than Darnold. Mm-hmm. Um, five touchdowns in nine games, nine picks. And I know that he has a lot of rushing numbers. I get that. But he's not going to make it in the NFL as a running quarterback. It's nice that he can scramble around and make plays. But a lot of times he's just bailing himself out. He doesn't stand in the pocket and make the right throws. He misses a lot of passes and sitting at 52%. His question, his biggest questions in college were his completion percentage. A lot of people question his accuracy. So for me, he hasn't been able to prove those naysayers wrong. And he is what he is. Like he kind of was that quarterback in college. He could run, he could throw, but he wasn't particularly a good pocket passer, not very accurate. So. I don't give him as bad of a grade as others, though. I gave him a C minus, but yeah, um, underwhelmed by him. All right, let's move on to the last rookie quarterback, and that is Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson. Now, he's obviously played less than everybody else on this list. He was the last quarterback taking, taken as well in the first round of last year's draft. Give me your grade of Lamar Jackson so far. I'm going to give him a B plus. And I say that because he might be the reason this team makes the playoffs. So you give him a better grade than everybody else? Yes. Over Baker, huh? Well, I'm just I'm just going based off how he's been playing right as so as consistently better than Mayfield. Mayfield's had some games where we're just like, oh my god, that's terrible. But Jackson's been playing consistently good to great, and his running game has been exemplary. And he's he's his passing's gotten better and better, honestly, as the weeks go on. And if Baltimore makes the playoffs, I think it's going to be riding Lamar Jackson. Yeah, and you can disagree I, with that, but I'm just I saying mean their defense. Their defense for sure has been carried. Yeah, but it. again, they need offense to win the games, so their defense doesn't have to do everything. Mm-hmm. And he's helping. The, if he gets the playoffs, their defense with with Joe Flacco, I don't think this team makes the playoffs even with this good defense. But with Lamar Jackson, this offense is starting to pick up some pace, pick up the pace, and I think they make the playoffs with Lamar Jackson. Yeah, he has Jackson. a he has a fifty eight percent completion percentage, although he throws the ball not so often. Six hundred eighty seven yards, uh, four touchdowns, and again we've seen this in basically four starts. So he's he's averaging around like one hundred fifty yards a game and one touchdown pass. His rushing is obviously being very good, very very good. Uh, I'm not sure, though, if we will see this long-term with him because he's going to have to, again, like Josh Allen, develop into a pocket passer. I give him a C+, plus, which would be the second-best grade of my five quarterbacks. So we both agree that he's been playing well. He's been playing good enough for them to win, but I haven't seen him. I don't know anything more about him today than I did about him at the draft. Like I still think he's the same player will he get better he should he will need to because he's not going to be able to run the ball like this and survive in the nfl that's just a fact like no one does this um and we're seeing cam newton right now be on the bad end of quarterback who just takes a beating 
he seems like he's been in the league for 25 years and Newton hasn't been in the league that long, but it's just based on how much punishment the guy's taken. So Lamar Jackson will need to take that next step. But as a passer, he doesn't look like he's anything special to me. And that's a problem. You have to show me that you can be special as a pocket passer, or I don't really believe in your future in the NFL. Is there time? Absolutely. So I do give him a C plus. All right. Uh, let's see. Maybe we should take a quick break. But before that, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Audible. What is Audible? It's where you listen to audiobooks, fitness programs, and all sorts of other programming. Listening to audiobooks inspires people, it motivates people, and brings us closer together. There's no better place to listen than Audible. So get your free first audiobook along with two selected Audible original titles and exclusive fitness programs when you start a 30-day trial. So take the time to listen. Just visit audible.com slash GSMC book or text GSMC book to 500 500. And right now for a limited time, you can get three months of audible for just six ninety five a month. That's more than half off the regular price, but you need to go to audible.com slash GSMC book. Or again, you can text GSMC book to 500 500 today to get started. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Hello, neighbor. I hope you're having a good day today. Because I'm having a pretty good day today myself. It's early in the morning, but just had I had coffee before I got here like I do. I get here early. I take a little new snooze in my car before we get to, I get to work. It's always nice to be well-rested before work. Don't you think so? Yes. Yes. All right, let's talk about football once again. I'm glad that you're well-rested. Um, anyways... I want to talk about how lucky the Miami Dolphins have been this year. So, uh -huh. their last two wins, one comes at the hands of Charles Clay, who could not reel in the catch yeah. in the end zone. The Bills lose, the Dolphins win. And then last week, the Dolphins win on basically a, a hook and ladder desperation mm -hmm. play to win the game. Also, yeah. they beat a Bears team this year with Brock Osweiler. I just want everyone to remember that. This is true. The Dolphin season has been something else, I will say. <laughs> I don't know how this team gets this lucky, to be honest with you, um, but they do. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I just wanted to add that. But Carson Wentz, he might be shut down for the rest of the season. He's going to get an MRI on his back. Do you think that he'll get shut down for the rest of the year? Uh, Probably. I think it's one of those things that it's gonna, that's what's going to happen. I, like, do you want to risk him having further injury? No. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, it's just too risky, in my opinion, because... Once, yeah, if he's being up, he shouldn't play, you yeah. know? Like, there, there's certain things in where you want him to play to make your team better, but there's also a chance, like, what if you hey, make, push him too hard that he's out for an indefinite period of time? It is interesting, too, because they play at Los Angeles today or this week against the Rams, and that's the location of where he injured his knee last year. It was that Rams game in the same week. Can you believe that? Same week, the huh? the same week, same team, same stadium. So uh, it makes sense. They have Nick Foles. You know, say what you want about Nick Foles, but he's a Super Bowl MVP. He also is probably the best backup quarterback in the NFL. I mean, it's hard to argue against that after what he did last year. 
So I think that they can win with Nick Foles. Uh, I wouldn't risk long term with Carson Wentz. If he does have a back injury, I think that's kind of scary. Yeah. For a uh, quarterback, that's bad. I mean, that's what ruined Joe Montana's career. That's that's what really uh, ended Tony Romo's career, amongst other quarterbacks. Back injuries are nothing to play around with. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, who knows what the ramifications can be if you keep pushing yourself. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's it's a scary thought, and I think if it, especially back or neck or anything involving this around the spine, I feel like you should be as careful and diligent as possible. Brandon Marshall has been cut by the New Orleans Saints, so this year he has played for the Seahawks and the Saints. He hasn't made an impact. I think it's safe to he say he scored he's a done. T- he got a touchdown catch. I think it's safe to say he's done, right? Yeah, but I think one of the main things about this is, did he play it down in, in, with the Saints? I don't remember. I don't remember him. Did he make a completion? Did he get in the, Did he get a thrown ball to him? I don't believe so. So he was basically nothing. So news story came out that the Raiders are being sued by the city of Oakland. And now the possibility is that the Raiders will not play in Oakland after this season, which means they have one more home game. It could be the last home game. It's on Christmas Eve against the Denver Broncos. Jeff, do you see... Christmas Eve versus Denver as the last game ever played for the Oakland. There's Raiders. a very good chance that is the case. Yeah, I wouldn't it, be surprised. It might, it might happen. It might happen. I don't know. We talked about uh, where they would play. Possibilities, you know, they could play in Santa Clara at the 49er Stadium. They could play in San Diego, possibly. Mark Davis play. would. That's his last. F, that's his last opportunity is to play at Santa Clara. That will be his last like option if nothing else can happen. They could play. We've heard Reno be in the conversation, mm-hmm. Las Vegas at Sam Boy Stadium, but every one of these places has a problem. Like there's something that say that would say no to this situation. So I don't know. I honestly don't think this is the last game. I think the Raiders will play in Oakland next year. I really do. If this Sioux goes through, which it, it there's a good chance it might be. That's the thing. He's like, if the Sioux goes all the way through, if they actually go through with this, then I'm leaving. I can. I don't. I don't think they're going to call his bluff. Like if, they, if that's the reason they stay, it's going to be raised like, okay, we won't sue you. We want to keep you here as long as we can until you go to Las Vegas. But then also you're going to be like, well, you're already going to leave us. So why? St-? It's like, it's like, what, remember the general manager they fired? It's like, you could stay at the end of the season, but we're still going to let you go. Yeah. Which is a weird thing to say. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to break up with you, but I'm going to hold you off until like Christmas time. So I have someone to be with and then I'll leave you. Mm-hmm. It's breakup season after the holidays are over. Yeah, but you got to keep someone with you. But the winter, you know, is is a hookup season, right? That's where people get together and then break up. Spring. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, join us tomorrow as we break down the Thursday night football game between the Chargers and the Chiefs. We'll also go over all the action for this week, week fifteen, week fifteen. Let that set in for a minute. Week 15 of the NFL, we'll discuss all the games in detail, break them down, what you need to know, who's hurt, who's out, who's playing, what matchups are key, and the potential outcomes. We'll do that all tomorrow. So, again, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time, everyone. Enjoy your Thursday, and then we will see you on Friday. And then I'll say next on Friday to enjoy your weekend. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program